welcome to dr haller online class today we will be discussing on another very very important topic that is electron transport chain so basically uh, electrons are generated or electrons are getting generated from different metabolic intermediates which passes through a number of complex and ultimately it forms a chain of reactions or it happens through a chain of reactions uh, which is further utilized for the production of ATP. We will be seeing those things in little detail but on a very brief note. So what is electron transport chain? The energy rich carbohydrates, particularly glucose, fatty acids and amino acids undergo a series of metabolic reactions and finally get converted into Ca2 and H2O. The reducing equivalents from various metabolic intermediates are transferred to coenzyme NAD plus and FAD to produce NADH and FADH2. The later to reduced coenzyme passes through the electron transport chain or respiratory chain and finally reduced oxygen into water. The passage of electrons through the ITC associated with the loss of free energy, a part of this free energy is utilized to generate ATP from ATP and PI. Now I will discuss what has been told here. What it is told? The reducing equivalence from various metabolic intermediates are transferred to the coenzyme NAD plus and FAD plus. So reducing equivalence from various metabolic intermediates means from carbohydrate, fatty acid, amino acid, they are the different type of metabolic intermediate that we have, we are well aware of this, fine. So reducing equivalent means hydrogen ion will, will come from this metabolic intermediate and it will transfer to coenzyme like NAD plus and FAD, fine. So from here, they are getting hydrogen plus ion with, and NAD plus FAD along with the hydrogen ion is getting reduced into NADH and FADH2. Now, what it is told here? They are telling the later two reduced coenzyme. These are now the reduced coenzyme. Why? Initially, they were NAD plus and FAD. Now, they became NADH and FADH2. So, hydrogen atom has been attached with this uh, coenzyme. That's why it become the reduced. So, what it is told here? The later two reduced coenzyme, that means NADH and FADH2, passes through the electron transport chain. It will pass through uh, electron transport chain. I will tell you what, what is that chain. Okay. And finally, reduce oxygen into water. Now, what will happen? From here, hydrogen molecule will come out and it will bind with the oxygen atom to form H2O. Fine. And the energy du during this process, what will happen? The electrons will flow and the energy will be liberated out. That part of the energy will be taken up by this ADP okay, and PI to form ATP. So all of the things will happen during the transport of electrons from one complex to the another complex. Now we'll see in little detail. Before that, we need to know where exactly in the cell this chain of reactions is happening, fine. So what is the answer? The answer is the mitochondria. The mitochondria are the centers for the metabolic oxidative reactions, what just previously we are discussing, to generate the reduced coenzyme, which in turn, so in the previous slide we saw first uh, from the intermediate metabolic intermediate like carbohydrates amino acids fat from there what is happening the reducing equivalent means hydrogen ion are getting generated and that are getting and then after the generation those hydrogen ions are going and combining with the coenzyme like nad plus 
uh, uh, FAD to finally form the reduced coenzyme that is NADH and FADH, which in turn are utilized this NADH and FADH2 means that is the reduced form of the coenzyme will be utilized in ATC to liberate energy in the form of the ATP. For this reason, phytoconde is appropriately regarded as the powerhouse of the cell. So where these all the things are happening inside the mitochondria. That's why mitochondria from our very basics, we know that mitochondria is known as the powerhouse of the cells. Now we are knowing what is the mechanism uh, behind mitochondria to be called as powerhouse of the cell. But what is the organization of the mitochondria? The mitochondria consists of five distinct parts. These are the outer membrane. We can see here is the structure of the mitochondria. This is the outer membrane of mitochondria. Fine. Then there is a inner membrane. This inner membrane are folded inside to form a orientation which is called Christi. And on and above the Christi, we can see uh, this kind of structure which is called phosphorylating subunit. Actually, the ATP which are producing in the cell are ex exactly synthesizing and these phosphorylating subunits which are present in the Christi over inner membrane of the mitochondria. Fine. And what is this space? The space between outer membrane and inner membrane of mitochondria is known as intermembrane space. And where does this ETC happens? The ETC happens at the inner mitochondrial membrane. Okay. Inner mitochondrial membrane. For ETC to happen or the electron transfer chain to happen, there are four different complexes. Those complexes are nothing but the protein molecules, which is called as complex 1, complex 2, complex 3, complex 4, and complex 5. All the five protein complexes will be situated on and over this inner mitochondrial membrane. Okay. And those all five are responsible for the electrons to transfer from one complex to the other complex to ultimately form or ultimately synthesize ATP. Okay, so all of that, all these things are happening over mitochondria. That's why mitochondria is ultimately called as a powerhouse of the cell. Now see in this diagram, we will try to understand the exact mechanism of what is happening. Now we know what is the organization structures all about of the mitochondria. Now we'll be knowing uh, how these things are happening. So what I told you are here in this picture, you can see this is the in, inner mitochondrial membrane. This is the inner mitochondrial membrane. As I told all the four complexes, I mean five protein complexes, that is complex one, complex two, complex three, complex four and complex five. These are all of the protein complexes. All those protein complexes can be observed on and over the inner mitochondrial membrane, right? And here, if we see, if this is the intermembrane space, then we can we can we can tell that the matrix matrix is nowhere between. I mean, matrix will be here, fine. So it is the inner mitochondrial membrane. So we can assume that the outer mitochondrial membrane will be somewhere at this region which is not shown here. Therefore, it is quite obvious that this space is nothing but the intermembrane space. So where the matrix will be? Matrix will be here in this area, which is shown here by little dark shadow. And it is, we, they have also pointed out here in the matrix. Fine. So what is happening? <laughs> the thing is, there will always be a difference in the concentration of hydrogen ion in between the matrix and in the intermembrane space. I am repeating, there will be always a difference in the concentration of hydrogen plus ion in the intermembrane space, I mean the space which is in between the 
inner mitochondrial membrane and outer mitochondrial membrane with that of the matrix i mean the inside cytosol of the mitochondria so there will always be a different in the concentration which is otherwise known as concentration gradient fine if there is gradient then only there will be some force that's why there will always be a movement of hydrogen ion plus from the either mat matrix to intermembrane phase or vice versa now see one by one what are the things happening in these complexes so from the metabolites what is coming nadh is coming as a reducing equivalent from the metabolites like carbohydrates or proteins fats okay this reducing coenzyme are coming okay and this reducing coenzyme are also known as the reservoir of electrons why because they are having hydrogen with them so any molecule having hydrogen with them means they are having huge amount of electrons so this nadh will come and it will bind with the complex one okay which is a protein protein molecule and what will happen immediately this nadh will be converted into nad plus will be converted into nad plus so how it will happen it can only happen if there is if there is a release of electron if there is a release of electron then only this nadh will get oxidized into the nad plus right the release of electron is nothing but the oxidation that's why nadh is getting oxidized into nad plus once nadh will get oxidized in nad plus then what will happen one electron molecule will be liberated out once it will be liberated out into the complex one these electron molecules now what will happen it has it will pass through a different redox center different different redox center okay which are situated inside this complex one in a little far away from each other ultimately these electrons will come down at the bottom so it was observed as long as electron will pass through the redox center so equally at that time what it will happen they will liberate the energy and those energy will be utilized for pumping this proton or hydrogen plus ion from the matrix to intermembrane space understood so as soon as nadh is released the electron it will be accepted by the uh, some redox center present in the complex one and then these electron molecules will try to pass through different redox center across this complex one once it will pass through what will happen in that time they will liberate some amount of energy and those amount of energy or those energy will be utilized for pumping the protons to transport across the membrane from matrix to intermembrane space fine now coming to complex 2 what happens in complex 2 instead of nadh in case of complex 2 the reservoir of the electron is fadh2 we know fadh2 where it has generated it was generated it generated during that tca cycle that we can recall this fadh2 will act as an electron reservoir and it will get oxidized into fad plus through the release of the electron and this electron will again be accepted by some of the redox center present in the complex 2 however this complex 2 will not utilize the energy which is liberated from the electron for pumping the protons this is the difference with the complex one so what are the difference there are two difference between complex one and complex two though their mechanism of function is pretty similar so first difference is for complex one nadh will act as a reservoir of electrons or donor of electrons whereas FADH2 will act as a donor of electron for ca in case of complex 2. What is the second difference? Second difference is in complex 1, when the electron will pass through the different redox center, that time the liberated energy will be utilized for pumping the proton across the membrane from matrix to intermembrane press. 
whereas here in case of complex 2 electron will pass through the final redox center and energy will also be released however that energy will not be utilized for pumping the protons so these are the very very important and major difference between complex 1 and complex 2 fine then what will happen ultimately the electron from complex 1 and complex 2 will come at the bottom and that will be accepted by that will be received by coenzyme q and that coenzyme q will take these electrons directly to complex 3. so in, in complex 3 out of the two electron which has come from the complex one and complex 2 one will be recycled one will be recycled and another one will be utilized or another one will be taken out by the cytochrome c into complex 4 understood so in complex 3 what is happening out of the two electrons which are coming out from the complex 1 and complex 2 one will be recycled back okay and another electron will again be received by cytochrome c to reach to complex 4 so ultimately what will happen here electron will come and oxygen molecule why we are breathing we are breathing because we are taking up oxygen molecule right that oxygen molecule will come and bind with this electron along with the proton which is passing through it will form h2o that is water that is the end product so from complex one to complex four what are the reaction mechanism is happening that is nothing but called as transport of electron and how this transport of electron is happening means it is happening through a chain means electron is passing from complex one to complex two complex two to complex three complex three to complex four so it is passing through the chain okay and it is transporting those electrons are transporting through this change chain and ultimately what is happening the energy what is revelating re out that energy is getting utilized for maintain the proton gradient and ultimately in complex 4 oxygen will be act as a final electron acceptor which along with this electron and proton will ultimately form water the equation has been given fine <laughs> now let us see what is happening in complex 5 so electron transport chain involves complex 1 complex 2 complex 3 and complex 4 something different what is happening in complex 5 what is that what complex 5 is complex 5 is another protein molecule like complex 1 complex 2 complex 3 complex 4 that is called f1 f0 atpase f1 f0 atpase where atp synthesis is happening okay how here adp and api uh, adp and pi that is the in inorganic phosphate is there fine so along with the adp and uh, pi so the phosphorylation will happen here so what will happen once the phosphorylation will happen here it will lead to produce the atp which will be utilized by the cell provided provided here there is a motor kind of unit which always rotates which always rotates this f1 f0 synthesis the natural habit of the f1 f0 synthesis complex is to rotate and to produce atp through the phosphorylation reaction with the help of adp and pi however this f1 f0 atp is this complex file will only rotate if there is the existence of this gradient of proton once there is no transfer of proton or once there is no existence of this proton gradient then what will happen this complex 5 that is f1 f0 atps will stop rotating ultimately what will happen there will not be any formation of atp which leads to cause the cell death which is the ultimatum fine so two things are happening here together one is electron transport chain another one is oxidative phosphorylation at the beginning of electron transport chain we are seeing the oxidation is happening right from nadh to nad plus when it is converting one electron is releasing that means only electron is releasing means oxidation is happening in 
complex one. Similarly, from FADH2, when FAD is forming, one electron is releasing. That means FADH2 is releasing one electron. Again, oxidation is happening. So that the beginning or early phase of electron transport chain, there is a reaction which is called oxidation. That's what is called oxidative. And at the very last of the reaction of electron transport chain, what is happening? Phosphorylation. Therefore, through electron transport chain, another reaction mechanism what is happening, which is very, very popular in biological or biochemistry, that is called oxidative phosphorylation. Now you all will be knowing how this oxidative phosphorylation is happening after my this lecture, right? So now I hope this concept are very much clear to you. Now only thing what you will be asking that or what the doubt will be generating, that what is the role of this coenzyme Q and cytochrome C? They are nothing but the electron carriers. They will just simply take the electron and carry from one place to the and one complex to the other complex. Fine, because electron have some negative charges and this, this phospholipid bilayer present in the inner intermembrane space is also having the same charge. So there will be a repulsion. In order to avoid the repulsion, this carrier molecules will come so that electron can easily pass through from one complex to the another complex. That is all about the electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation. Fine. Uh, and I have separately given all the theoretical aspect, what I told, what I told all the mechanism of the electron transport of oxidative phosph phosphorylation, all I have mentioned here in the uh, in this write-up fine so then what i did in the reaction mechanism for what is happening with every complexes i have also given it separately so that you all can understand it hope this lecture will be very much helpful to all of you to understand two important phenomena in biochemistry or biological science that is uh, electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation thank you